The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions of WBGR Network. Any questions or concerns about what is said should be directed to the show host, whose information will be provided upon request. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Let's Talk Money 2020 again. Uh, today is Friday, uh, May 8th. Uh, this this week I'm going to do something that's a little bit different than the, the prior weeks. Um, I'm going to talk just briefly today about uh, the the the, the uh, uh, COVID-19 and the um, the stimulus packages uh, surrounding the uh, uh, COVID-19. Just just real briefly. Uh, of course, I just want to reiterate that you know I, I think the the uh, program has got some a uh, few problems that uh, we're going to need to iron out. I think the eight weeks is, is just too short because, uh, again, uh, if you received the money, say, two weeks ago or this week, the economy is still bad and some people still living under restrictions, uh, and, and it's going to be hard to really make money. So you're basically just hiring people just to uh, just to sit around probably because your, your, your revenues are not there yet. Uh, the other thing is, uh, as I mentioned on, on prior uh, 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 broadcasts, is that uh, the the payroll the payroll that you have forgiven is not tax deductible, so that's going that's going to be a shock on your tax return. Um, at, no no real updates this week. It seems like things are slowing down as far as um, uh, if you're applying uh, this week. It seems like that um, your banks are not getting back to you. Uh, at least the small banks are not getting back to you as quick as they, they used to get to you. Um, it's probably because there's so many people in the, in the system now, and it's, it's really kind of hard to process a brand new loan. But I, I'm still signing clients up, um, and I think we're going to keep signing them up until the money is gone. Um, I, I'm going to try to move real fast here because uh, someone asked me asked me an interesting question. Um, um, they asked, um, uh, so they, should they be a, a sole proprietor or a single member LLC? Uh, and I think I have some some broadcasts about uh, so a similar type question uh, out on YouTube. So you can go out on YouTube to see certain uh, uh, videos that we've actually done in the past. Let me just give you a little background. Uh, if someone were to come in my office and ask me this, um, should I be a sole proprietor or a single member LLC? Um, you, you know, there, there's a bunch of questions that I would probably start to formulate in, in my mind and, and then and then you know without the the client really knowing why I'm asking certain questions uh, it may sound like I, it may sound like I'm, I'm even probing just a little bit but um, th there's a lot of questions you you want to get on the table before you start answering questions like this because the, if you're going to ask me a question like that it tells me that you you really narrowed down the entity type that that you would even consider and that's that's a sole proprietorship or a a single member LLC but it turns out they, they might not be the the entities for you, or, or you know, just being a sole proprietor might not be for you anyway. So um, what I uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to answer the question as direct as I possibly can uh, by by giving you the pros and, and cons of, of each. And, and and again, this is a very limited question. Um, should you be a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC? So these things don't necessarily apply to, you know, your, like your S Corps, your C Corps, uh, and other types of entities. So I'm just answering the question as it was presented to me. All right. So, um, it, okay, let me, let me just go over the, the, the differences. Okay. Um, the, the, the biggest difference, whether you want to be a sole proprietor, proprietor or a single member LLC is liability. All right. Um, so conceptually, if you are a LLC, whether it's a regular LLC or a single member LLC, then you are afforded uh, liability from lawsuits. So um, if someone tries to sue you, then you have a corporate veil around being a LLC technically, um, because what you're going to do is you're going to go to the state and you're going to register that business as a LLC. Um, and, and, and just by doing that, you're supposed to have protection. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't protect you against gross negligence. So if you do something that was completely negligent, a good lawyer is going to pierce whatever veil, whatever corporate or entity structure that you put up, and they're going to sue you directly. Um, so uh, another thing is you might, to a limited degree, 
you, you're going to be limited to, when it comes to liability, when it comes to payroll taxes, uh, especially non-trust fund taxes. So uh, because in, in the, and for the most part, if you are a single member LLC, um, you're going to get a tax ID number and um, you're going to use that tax ID number to actually do all your filing as far as your payroll is concerned. But if you do get behind on those taxes, if you have the trust fund portion, eventually the trust fund portion will be assessed to you personally anyway. So, um, you know, consider that. But, but the main thing is, is, is liability. Um, now, here's, here's some other differences. The LLC owner cannot receive a W-2. Right. So uh, both of these entities, when you file your tax return, a, a single member LLC or a sole proprietor, you're going to put your um, your business income and losses on a Schedule C, which is part of your personal return. Um, so uh, but the just by definition and most most people kind of overlook this, but a LLC owner cannot receive a W-2. So if you, you're trying to receive a W-2 from the business, a LLC is probably not the, the route to go. Um, and I've seen um, situations where um, this has really backfired uh, and, and it really, it, they don't really catch it um, if you just file a return and you never audit it. They really don't, don't really catch it. Um, but if, you, if you're ever involved in an employment audit, which I think personally an employment audit is probably worse than a regular IRS audit. Both of them are done or it can be conducted by the IRS. Uh, but I think an employment audit from what my, our experience, it's uh, uh, much, much uh, more uh, intensive. Um, so if you ever, you know, audit it as far as an employment audit is concerned, they're going to say, hey, look, you, you, you actually filed as a W-2 owner and you are uh, well, LLC owner and you, you're, you filed a, a W-2. You can't do this. So they're going to try to reconfigure things and you'll probably end up having to pay some additional taxes. Um, you must have an EIN number uh, for an LLC, whether it's a single member LLC or a um, discipline LLC. Um, the LLC requires state filing. So uh, there, there's usually an annual fee to actually keep your LLC going. A minimal fee, you know, three, four hundred dollars in, in most cases. Uh, but you will have that and you're going to have to do whatever the paperwork it is to continue the, the filings every, every year. Um, okay, so the, the sole proprietorship, um, if I was a sole proprietor, I would just go on and get an EIN number anyway, um, just so that the payroll taxes, if I do have payroll, I can actually use that EIN number. So you can get a EIN number even with a, a sole proprietorship. And again, the question was really, let me just rephrase, let me just say the question again, um, should they be a single member LLC or a sole proprietor, all right? So uh, these things don't necessarily apply to every entity structure. So let me let me go into some of the things that are similar. All right. But as I said before, both are filed on a Schedule C. OK, um, the tax treatment is generally this is pretty much the same. You're going to pay uh, two types of taxes if you are a single member LLC or a sole proprietor. You're going to pay regular taxes. And, which is, you know, your regular corporate, I mean, I'm sorry, your regular personal income tax rates. Um, or you're going to pay, oh, I'm sorry, in addition, you're going to pay self-employment taxes on the net income. So the self-employment taxes is 15.3%. Uh, could get pretty hefty, but um, uh, this, these are the two taxes that you, that you really have to pay if you are a single member LLC or a uh, sole proprietor. Sole proprietors are very easy. You know, there is no, no, no real paperwork to do at the state level. Um, you just open up a business and you just start your business and you just report everything on a Schedule C. You do the same thing with, a, with an LLC. Uh, however, you do have the annual filings that you, you're, you're going to have to fill out every year. Uh, we're talking about similarities now. Uh, both are eligible for the 20% uh, QBI income. So uh, starting in 2018, under the, the Trump laws, uh, you get a 20 up to a 20% deduction 
for um, uh, uh, your net income on a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC. Um, even if you have an S Corp, um, an S -corp you, you actually have the 20% deduction as well. Uh, but we're just limiting this conversation just for the um, sole proprietorships and the single member LLCs. Um, now, um, now here, here's another issue. Now, now let me just say this before I, I, I get into the next one. I, I've been a CPA since 1983, and I've seen all kinds of situations, all types of clients. I've seen um, uh, uh, companies come, uh, companies and, and uh, um, individuals come together to form business joint ventures. I've seen them separate and go the separate ways. I've seen just just so many uh, through, throughout my uh, professional career. Uh, but I, I say that because there are some there are certain things that um, become kind of obvious once you've been in the business long enough. And one of these things that that is subtle until you you really have to deal with it, and then and then it becomes a big deal. But um, one thing you got to consider if you are a a sole proprietor or 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 a single member LLC is that if you have a spouse. Remember, you are filing most of the times that you you know if you file a joint return, you are exposing that that spouse to your business dealings, because you're going to be on the same tax return. You're just on a different schedule on the tax return. So, let me give you some examples of what I'm talking about. Um, if your spouse, for example, she may be a government contractor, and she does very well. So um, the government requires uh, these contractors to actually submit their tax returns uh, every year. So if you are on the, the uh, if they have to submit their tax returns, then your business and your business dealings are going to be, you know, using the, the single member LLC or the sole proprietorship is going to be sent along with that. So whatever you're doing on that that L, that uh, single member LLC or that uh, that sole proprietorship business, it gets lumps lumped in there. So when you you give this document to the government, when the spouse gives a document to the government, you're basically ex exposing each other. So that whoever's on the government side is going to see they're going to they're going to see your business um, and vice versa. Um, the if you're doing a joint return then the, the other spouse, their government dealings are going to be on that return. So you might have to give someone your personal tax return because the business is on there. So you, you kind of have to consider uh, uh, things like that. Um, there, 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 was, there was one more. Oh, yeah. So, so the biggest one that we see all the time is um, if one spouse, um, say, say, say the spouse has a... Uh, this is the spouse, and, and he or she has a, um, a LLC or a, a single member. L I'm sorry, a, a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC, um, and they don't necessarily pay their taxes. Well, you, you're going to expose the other spouse that may have a job or um, have their own business, a separate business. Um, you're going to expose the spouse that's on the return to your tax liability. So that's one thing that you want to consider on, on both entity structures. You're not going to be able to get around that if you actually go the Schedule C route. So um, personally, personally, that's why I, I really I really like uh, I really like uh, 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 S Corps um, because S Corps gives you the flexibility to actually present the financials on a separate tax return. Um, and uh, there's certain advantages with a, a S corp. If I have a, if I have time today, I'll get into some of those advantages. But I, I like S corps, generally speaking, much better than um, than than LLCs. I mean, there, there, there's tax advantages for an S corp um, in, in certain situations. Um, again, um, you have the liability um, protection. Um, also, a S corp. Um, like I said before, it doesn't necessarily expose the two parties to one another. So if you have the government, if you have the government contractor who is a S corp, she can he or she can just give the uh, government the copy of the S corp, and 
you know, um, no harm, no foul. You, you, you don't see what the other spouse is doing on the, the C Corp. So, um, you know, I, I, I like the, the S Corps a, a lot better. Um, so so here's, here's another similarity, um, and this is big. Uh, believe it or not, but both are hard to de hard to really deal with lenders. So by that I mean if you have a um, either one of those structures, single member LLC or a um, a, a sole proprietorship, um, when you go to get say financing for your your house or you want to buy a house or something, you know the, the lenders are really good at really understanding what is a W two. You know it just has simple numbers on it. This is what you make. Here's what you pay in taxes, and 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 here are some of the the uh, things that like pre pre um, uh, deferred uh, uh, tax deductions and that sort of thing. Um, so, but they don't necessarily know how to deal with a um, LLC or or a um, single member LLC and a sole proprietorship because um, there are, there are a lot there are a lot more factors that they have to consider, you know. Um, if you show losses on the return uh, on the Schedule C, then they're thinking, okay, well, you might continue to, to lose money and it's going to affect your ability to actually pay the loan. Um, it's just much harder to really qualify if you are, um, you know, you're on the bubble, you're not really showing a lot of net profit on that Schedule C. So, and they, they start asking a million and one questions uh, about your Schedule C. So it's not a, it's not an easy thing for the uh, lenders to, to really deal with. So um, those are pretty much the, the, the similarities. Again, you know, I, I want to say this again. I, I, I like the 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 C corps and uh, the S corps. Sorry, the S corps and and the type of things that they allow the small business owner. You know, um, the S corp. I'm going to give you a little background. On the S corp. The S corp was really. Um, uh, designed to put you pretty much on even keel with a LLC or a um, sole proprietor uh, in that there's there's only one level of tax there's no tax at the entity level with a with a S Corp so it really the net income flows to you personally but the income and the expenses they all show up on a um, an, a 1120s so um, those are the um, the similarities um, and the um, uh, uh, differences between the sole proprietor and the single member LLC. Again, from a tax perspective, you basically are dealing with the same type of advantages and disadvantages um, for a single member LLC. There are rare occasions where the tax situation might be a little bit different with a single member LLC. One that comes to mind immediately is if you personally guarantee loans, um, and later on you get a partner, you can you can transfer some of those uh, those that 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 loan gets part of the basis of your your partnership if you were eventually teamed with a with a partner, and you can actually transfer some of the basis so you can actually take bigger losses, um, you know just just th things like that. But those those cases are 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 just very very rare. Um, but if you ask me, you know, which one is better than the other, um, I, I, just, I just, again, I, I think it all depends, you know, if you are, are, are doing this, you're starting this business venture and you're not quite sure how it's going to land and you're just going to say, look, I'm just going to try it, right? You know, then I would lean towards saying, hey, look, stay as a single member LLC. Don't go through the, prog the, the process of filing with the states and paying the, the annual um, state filings. Don't go through all that. If you're not really, if you haven't really done a lot of research on what you're doing and you're just trying something out to see how it goes, stay as a sole proprietorship. And then when you start to get more comfortable in the business, you start to make more money, then you can talk about another entity structure. Um, but keep in mind, the IRS can actually... Um, uh, uh, deem you as a hobby if you if you keep that business on a Schedule C, mm -hmm. and then you have more than three out of um, five years on the uh, Schedule C of showing losses, they can come back and say you're a hobby. But that usually happens in audit. It usually doesn't happen much um, uh, when it comes to um, you know just following a return. It doesn't automatically um, reject your return because three out of five years you you're showing losses. 
Um, so, but if you were serious about, you know, what you were doing, um, you, you want to have partners in the future and so forth, I would say go on and start that LLC. Um, if, if you have done the research, um, you know, I, I like the fact that you know, a, a single member LLC will give you certain things that necessarily that a S corp won't give you at times. Like for example, uh, right there on the schedule C, you, if you work out of your home, you can use business use of home deductions on both of those entity structures. I'm talking um, single member LLC and sole proprietorship. So um, those type of things become um, to your avail if you um, take use of the business use of home. Um, that can be additional deductions for you. You know, if you um, you could you could take the square footage of the of, of your office, divide that. I'm sorry. Um, take the, the total square footage of your 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 living mm -hmm. your living space um, when it comes to you know a house or apartment or whatever, and divide that and divide that number by or you dividing. Sorry, you divided the the your office space by the the total square footage of the, uh, the your your living your dwelling. And that gives you your percentage, so you can take that same percentage and deduct off um, utilities, um, uh, uh, um, rent, um, your portion of mortgage, property taxes, um, security system. Um, I mentioned utilities. Um, you know, uh, cable bill. Um, although I would put the cable bill on the right on the Schedule C. Um, uh, and you can use you can use the basis of the home, um, which you paid for the home, and get that same percentage on it. Um, so there are a lot of things you can do on that Schedule C. But you know, I I, I, I wouldn't stay at that point for long. Uh, again, I you know I'm in business. I start businesses to make money. I don't really start businesses to make tax deductions. So um, you know, I think that most people you know they want to make money when they're in these businesses and, and just they just so happen to, to lose money that's a different story but if you're in the business of you know you just want tax deductions then you know stay as a, a stay as a sole proprietorship or you could even consider being a sing, single member LLC um, and you can take those 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 tax write-offs and against your your wages so um, we're gonna take a break at this point and um, well, before we go to break I'm, I'm gonna give you some um some questions so if you came in my office and say well, hey what what type what type of entity structure should I, I i really be um i ask a a a ton of questions when you come in our office we we have a questionnaire and we ask a ton of questions and these questions are not the the typical questions um that that you know most tax preparers would, re would really ask but i'm trying we're trying to formulate you know the best strategy for you so you don't want to miss these questions because they're going to have you scratching your head and you're going to be saying hey Kay, why is he asking me these things and I'm going to give you the why I'm going to, and, and, and they're going to be very interesting questions so don't go anywhere uh, when we come back we'll go over those questions so uh, let's take a break and we'll be back Hi, I'm Troy Emery here at TD Emory & Associates, we offer a wide variety of business tax services for small and large companies, including corporations and partnerships, nonprofits, and real estate taxation. Also, we offer audits, compilations, and reviews. Let our knowledgeable staff at TD Emory & Associates help you optimize your tax benefits today. Dependable, accurate, trustworthy, TD Emory & Associates. I'm sure back on okay we're back all right so um I, I told you um before the break that when you come into our office we ask a a boatload of questions if you um are starting a business uh even if you're not starting a business we we like to know uh certain questions about your business before we even get started so I, i'm, I'm going to give you um some of these questions now, now keep in mind these questions they, they sound really really probing but we're going places with these questions so um, um, so, so the first thing, pretty obvious, we want to know what, what's the nature of the business. Um, tell me what you're going to be doing, right? And, and that that determines which way we, we're trying to steer you. Like, well, let me just give you an example. If you told me that um, you want to keep buying real estate and you want to hold real estate, um, and you're going to have partners, and then you know you're going to have some partners that will have will be 
they, they will own um, a certain property and another partner or a set of partners will own other um, uh, properties, then, then we're leaning towards a LLC structure, not a single member LLC. We're, we're leaning towards an LLC structure. Um, just, just to give you an example, um, so, so we're, we're always probing. We're asking, okay, um, tell me, tell, tell me a little bit about the business. Tell me why you want to do this business. Um, what drives you in this business? We, and we're asking for, we're asking these questions because it's going to formulate, believe it or not, in our minds, which way is the best for you. And, and I, we want you to just go into detail. We want you to describe your passion for the business, why you got in the business. What are you in business for? Are you in business to make money? Are you in business for tax deductions? Are you in business for something else? Are you in business because somebody else was in business and you took it over? We want to know why are you in business? Um, and, and, and that's going to lead us. And you, you just have no idea the, the type of things that really go off in our minds when you when you actually get into why you're in business. How long have you been in business? Did you just start this business? Have you been in the business for five years, 10 years, whatever? Um, so, so with that, we're trying to see, um, okay, well, how mature is this person? How disciplined is this person? If they just got in the business, then it's kind of hard to make an assessment on, on how disciplined they are. And you have to be disciplined in business. Business is about serious and supreme discipline. Um, just say taxes, for example. Is that person going to really pay his taxes, right? Is, or is did that person just come from a W-2 job, no, uh, you know, or he was an employee um, if that was the case, we're going to steer you a certain direction. If you're, in, for example, if you're an employee, then in most cases we're going to steer you towards being a a uh, S corp, and because remember, an LLC owner cannot receive a W two. So we're trying we trying to we're trying to transition you from where you were where you what you were used to, and and really not change that and really re recreate that. So we're really trying to put you in an S-corp structure. Um, if you told me that, hey, look, I'm starting a consulting business, right? I'm, it's going to be government contractors or, or, or whatever it's going to be. And I just came from a job, right? So I, I know I know there are certain dependencies. There are certain things. There are certain weird creatures or habits. There are certain things that you expect every week and or every two weeks or every semi-monthly. You're expecting a paycheck. Right. So and, and, and then you don't you don't you're not necessarily used to making estimated payments. You're not used to making deposits or are just doing calculations to see where you are as a business and how much taxes that you should pay up to a certain point. So we're trying we're trying to alleviate all that by sliding you into an S corp structure. It's going to be a lot easier to do that. So um, we're trying to figure out, you know, why you're in business. Um, how long have you been in business? Um, uh, um, do you want to just do it for tax deductions? If you're just doing it for tax deductions, you know, you really took, took a lot of the fun out of the games because we're trying to help you make money. We're not trying to make you lose money. I'm not trying to help you lose money. Um, so um, we want to know why. Um, but the bigger question to us is not necessarily if you come in and say, hey, look, I want to be a LLC. We're trying to figure out why you want to be an LLC why you want to be a S Corp or whatever. So the biggest question is, you know, what what entity type is best for you? So that that takes just understanding who you are as a person, what are the relationships in your life, what is what is what is your past like? I mean, it depends on so many different factors. Now you're not going to get this in a book. I'm going to tell you straight up. They're not going to tell you this in a book. I, I'm just telling you this from practical experience here. Um, because if you go by the book, eh, you're not going to be that that successful in, in your undertaking here. Um, so so here's some more questions. Tell me about your job. We want to know what was your job like. Again, we're formulating in the in the future. Okay, what type of person is this guy going to be or this lady is going to be? Um, will they will they be conscious of taxes? Will they be conscious of basis? I mean, there, there's a lot of things that we, we really want you to consider. And here's a big one that we always ask for. Um, what what are your plans for the next two, three, five years? We always ask that question. It's on our questionnaire. The reason is, uh, one of the reasons is, if you tell us, hey, look, um, I'm trying to buy a house next year. I don't own a house. I'm trying to buy a house. Well, okay, now, now, now we're leaning towards the S-Corp structure. 
or you can get a paycheck and then you can just give that that w-2 to the lender but um you know if you told me that you're trying to to get business financing or so forth um um the the whether you're an llc or a c corp it has less of less importance because even if you're a small business and you own a c corp um uh s corp or if you own an, an llc you know you're not making a money a lot of money when you start off and they're going to want to see two three million dollars of of hard assets before they, they allow you to get loans without personal guarantees. I'm talking about line of credits and so forth. They'll give you a credit card or whatever, but I'm talking about lines of credits. So um, um, uh, we asked, do you expect losses? Do you do you expect gains? And if you expect these huge losses, just suppose you're a person that um, you have a job and you want to start this business, but you're going to experience huge losses in the beginning. Well, we're going to, we're going to lean towards being a C corp. Why? Because we don't want these large losses to come over to you personally and just say wipe out your W two income. Now we do see these we do see these cases sometimes. You know, it's not it's not it's not often, but we we see these cases. Let me see somebody somebody purchased a a, a store that was already in existence, right? And um, the store had very very low sales, and this might take the person two to three four years to actually get that store up they they go into it knowing that they're going to be they're going to be losing seventy eighty thousand dollars a year well if they only make on a w-2 seventy thousand dollars it's going to wipe out that income and we don't want that to happen because we're trying not to get audited and we're we're, tr we're, we're trying to really use those losses later when they do start to make money um, another question that we ask is hey do you owe back taxes you know, we're asking that question because, again, we're trying to figure out how disciplined is this person, right? Um, does a spouse own that uh, back taxes? So um, do you already own a business? Tell me about the business. So we're trying to figure out, okay, well, does this person, if they own this business and they're, 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 most of their salary comes from this business, well, this person can actually start another business and not necessarily draw a salary. So if they're not necessarily drawing a salary, then we can start opening up the possibility to become an LLC because remember an LLC doesn't you don't you don't have a W two so they have their W two over in the other business however however they they might just start this business and and you know in their minds they're thinking hey look I'm not going to take a salary right so in that case we're, again we're we're leaning towards the 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 LLC we're trying to figure out how much do you know about the business um, are you just starting. How much how much research have you done in the business um, um, and, and, if, and if you have not done much research you just started in the business we might just say hey look why don't you just stay as a sole proprietor or a single member LLC um, especially if you, you expect losses um, do, are you gonna have personal guarantees for business um, again are, are you gonna need um, personal credit that that deter that has an, a factor on which which side or which type of entity that you that you really choose. Here's here's a huge one. Um, um, how much do you have in your retirement? Right. We want to know that because the reason why, the reason why we want to know that is because um, there might be other avenues um, when it comes to capital. Um, if you are you come to us and you're trying to start a business and you're th you're thinly capitalized. You know, we're trying to figure out where can we get capital from. Well, what well, we might want to do a self-directed IRA for you. Well, in, in, in that case, what you do is you you set up a, a, a pension plan, um, and what what you're doing is in that pension plan. I'm just simplifying it. You're putting the stock of your company into that pension, into that pension plan, and once you do that, you can make tax-free withdrawals from the the actual pension plan. Right, um, because basically you're you're investing into that 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 pension plan, um, so so and that might be an option for you if you got a lot of savings. Uh, the worst thing you want to do is just draw money out of your savings and and, and you take that fifteen percent tax on on that withdrawal. Um, it's better if you use a self directed IRA to, to do that, and you can do you can pull the money tax free. Again, we're trying to see how disciplined you are, or and if you're not that disciplined, that's that's cool too. That's cool too because we we have a, a, a situation for you if you're not that disciplined. So um, 
um, it, we, we, there are other things that we're, we're looking at. These things are not are, are not as important. We look at um, what type of car do you drive based on your income? How big is your house based on your income? That that really goes into the decisions as far as the energy structure as well. Because it, you know, if you tell me that um, you know um, you, you drive a very expensive car, um, you you you're always um, uh, struggling when it comes to cash, um, then then we're not going to put you in a situation where you start to make money in an LLC and um, next thing you know you got tax liabilities because you're not paying those estimated taxes we're going to try to we're going to try to steer you into something more disciplined um, into like the Nest Corp where you get a, a W-2 uh, and not get behind on, on the taxes uh, I just got a little bit uh, just a little bit more time so I'm just going to go through these kind of quickly and what I'll do is um, I may just come back next week and, and start to really break down some of these things a little a little further all right so um uh, are, is this the type of person that will keep the business expenses from the personal expenses um that determines which way we're going to go now here here are the real wild questions here you know you, you come in and, and you say you're going to start a business and i say hmm, uh are you married uh yeah 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 I, you know i'm married and whatever and been married for x amount of years uh what did your spouse do See, so we're trying to figure out, you know, is your spouse a government contractor? Um, um, is your, does your spouse make enough money where you cannot take a salary? If you don't take a salary, then we can put you in a certain in entity structure. Um, um, we're trying to measure. We start, we start to ask questions, deep questions, probing questions into the marriage. You know, we might even ask, uh, well, um, how successful is your marriage? And we're dead serious. Um, um, do you struggle in the marriage? Um, are you having marriage problems? Do you foresee having marriage problems? And we're asking this for a reason. Um, we're asking this for a reason because, hey, look, if this is this if this is a situation where we see divorce might be coming up, um, then then we're, we're going to say, okay, well, let's try to make his or her life a little easier by not exposing potentially. The business to some divorce court so we might lean towards a C court where you do all your business dealings in, in a C court and all you do is just take a salary from that C court so because you don't want to be in, in a divorce court and your business your, your business becomes you know front page news in a divorce court so um, we're asking questions like that we're asking questions as far as you know uh, um, how is your marriage because if we if we don't ask those type of questions, then you you know legal fees. Um, we're asked we're trying to see how disciplined the person is with their marriage because you know do they have do they have a a a a a, a potential uh, for cheating? Because be honest with you, there's economic there's economic factors involved in that. Believe it or not, they are there are serious economic factors in that. So so we, we we try we don't pass judgment, but we're trying to listen, right? Listen to the situation, uh, make certain inferences inferences, and say, okay, what's the best thing for this person here? Um, do they have children? Um, um, do you do you expect? partners to to actually become part of the the ownership structure um but don't discount the the marriage the marriage questions um uh I, i'm telling you we we see people come in all the time and and you know when you go into these marriage situations when you go into these divorce situations you want to be properly positioned to go into that divorce you, you don't and you don't want it to catch you off guard where again you're exposing your business dealings in the court. That's not the purpose of why you started business, to be honest with you. We're not passing judgment here, but we're trying to we're trying to figure out in the next three, four, five years where you're gonna be and what kind of pain you're gonna be in. So we're trying to alleviate some of that some of that pain. But again, um you know, uh we're we're asking a lot of questions. Um and it's very important for us to get the answer to those questions. So we we're, we're watching body language. We're look we're looking at um um, you know, we're, we're looking at how they filed the taxes in the past. We're looking at the relationship, whether whether they they are confrontational with one another or are they harmonious with one another. Um, but but there are a lot of factors that we that we want to consider. Um, you know, and another reason why we're asking is because 
if if the two were fighting over um, the business and you know what should be done, that person is spending more, more too much time with the business or um, um, they're, they're putting too much money in the business. It might be a situation where the business does not come up every year when we do taxes, when we file our taxes. We, we just handle the, the business side with, with the business partner and then we bring in the spouse. Or we, we might say, hey, look, you, you should file a separate return because you don't get necessarily get along. I understand the tax advantages, but if you're going to be fighting over it every year and the friction just, just increases every year, it's going, it's going to determine which type of entity structure we're going, to, we're going to set up for you. Now, again, you're not going to, you're not going to hear this stuff in a book. I'm just giving you just, just practical experiences here. So, so, so with that, um, those are some of the questions we ask. It's not a, um, a, a, a real easy question to ask when it, um, to answer when it comes to what type of entity structure um, that you want to have. But believe me, your, your personal lifestyle has a serious ramification on how you go forward with the business. Anyway, um, I think I better, better stop there. Um, and we can delve a little bit more into this in, in, future, in future broadcasts. I can give you some examples, some stories, and so forth. Um, and, and we can uh, actually do this in, in, in the future. So um, with that, I think um, we're going to put a pin in it until next week. So uh, everybody, let's, let's be safe, um, be positive, work hard, extremely hard. Um, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Dependable, accurate, trustworthy, T.D. Emery and Associates. What is this? The IRS? We know that your tax preparation requires more than just the basics. Hi, I'm Troy Emery, and I've spent my entire professional career helping taxpayers in a variety of tax issues. Let us show you how to confront and solve tax issues with every viable option under the law.